Welcome back to our series on the nexus of cryptocurrency and national security. In our previous episode, we discussed how cryptocurrency was reshaping national security and touched on the rise of crypto crime on a global scale. Today, we're gonna to explore the intricate web of hacking, ransomware attacks, money laundering, and illicit cryptocurrency mining that intertwines North Korea and Russia. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and to provide valuable insights into the strategies and motivations of these two nations, we're joined again by Joan Heald, Vice President of IC DOD Software Solutions for Chain Analysis, and Colonel Dave Hamilton, U.S. Army retired and now threat finance exploitation consultant. Uh, Joan and Dave, thank you so much for joining us again. And Joan, uh, Joan, I'm going to ask you if you would to give us a sense for how does North Korea's ability to leverage the power of cryptocurrency hacking go beyond just financial considerations and actually presents a broader national security uh, issue? So we see North Korea carrying out ransomware attacks and other hacks to fund their nuclear weapons programs and to prop up their economy at large. We also see other nation states using cryptocurrency to uh, for um, sanction invasion. Um, for example, North Korea in 2020 reported 142 million in exports of goods. In 2022, it was reported that North Korea stole $1.7 billion in cryptocurrency. So that is obviously a large part of their income. And Dave, uh, can you talk a little about, so what concrete steps are being taken to prevent further theft and illicit funds from reaching uh, these nations and their destructive objectives? Now, why good seeing you again. Um, it's an interesting issue with public and private entities are working together to enhance their policies, authorities and capabilities in an effort to prevent detect, then interdict those transactions. The effectiveness of those efforts are highly dependent though on the evolution of tools and their efficient integration into enforcement mechanisms. But I wanna give you a couple of examples that prove the point. The OPEC sanctioning recently of Tornado Cash. It's a virtual currency mixer that enabled North Korean attempts at obscure stolen Bitcoin. The sanctions from OPEC not only slowed Korean nuclear ambition, but provided risk of financial ruin as it turns to future enablers. But we're also decreasing the potential return on investment for these illicit actors by successfully recovering stolen digital assets and blacklisting addresses tied to stolen and laundered cryptocurrencies to render those assets that cannot be recovered as unspendable. As is often the case, the best tool to starve adversaries is prevention. When prevention fails, we must have the tools and authorities to take swift and decisive action to prevent funding of illicit activity. And then as the threats of crypto crime looms and Russia-based groups continue to engage in cryptocurrency-based crime, uh, such as ransomware attacks or money laundering, what measures are being implemented uh, successfully today to combat these threats head on? Well, as previously mentioned, prevention is the most effective step. Resilience requires hardening systems to avoid most risk, which includes robust cyber and social engineering safeguards. However, offense is the best defense when it comes to state of a state or state enabled actor. Governments and their allies are focusing on massing of capabilities that overwhelm these adversaries. Actions can include the fusion of digital and traditional investigation techniques with intelligence tools that locate global targets, implementing the statecraft to generate solutions for international interdictions, and then the tactical patience to endure many years required to close a case and recover victim assets. And I'll point to the nearly decades long case of Mt. Gox and BTCE as examples of that perseverance that is required. And then Joan, let me ask you as well, what, what measures are you seeing that are being implemented to really help uh, combat these kinds of threats? Yeah, so I was going to say blockchain anal analytics could play a big role here. So using a tool like Chainalysis Reactor would help analysts be able to build that pattern of life scenario that's so important. It also helps them uncover obfuscated funds from its or their origin to destination. 
And then lastly, be able to glean that behavior on the blockchain to actually determine the destination of those funds. And then Dave, can you talk about at the end of the day, how, how effective are these countermeasures in combating and, and reducing the prevalence of these activities? Well, we have to admit that in the early days, bad actors had free reign, but we are quickly catching up. A demonstration of these increased effectiveness of countermeasures is a multinational enforcement of a Russian crypto exchange. The simultaneous DOJ arrest of the exchange founder and the dismantling of the exchange's digital infrastructure by Europol demonstrates real-time application of measures designed not only to stop the risk, but to secure digital assets, victims, and to collect intelligence and evidence that is useful in further investigations, as well as looking back to solve past investigations. And Joan, I'm curious uh, from your perspective, how, how do you see these countermeasures also safeguarding the integrity of systems and digital assets? Yeah, so as Dave has said, education and awareness are key. And as software vendors, as we upgrade software or provide patches, it's very important for businesses to quickly implement those to, to keep everything more secure. I'd also say blockchain analytics can play a big role in uh, helping solve the ransomware problems. And, um, and then also, as Dave has said before, too, it's around collaboration. So federal, state, local law enforcement and regulatory industries really need to work together so that we can make more progress. Well, I know there's a lot to cover in this topic. and. Um... We uh, invite our viewers to come to, back to our next and final episode where we're going to explore how uh, crypto crime is um, being used in places like China and Iran. In the meantime, uh, Joan Heald and Dave Hamilton, thank you for joining us in this episode, and we look forward to welcoming you back to discuss this further. So thanks again for being with us. Thank you. See you soon.